You know, if, if you're watching what's going on out there at Starbase, uh, you may be wondering, what in the heck are they up to now? Kicking it off with some interestingly shaped structures here, rolling out on an SPMT. Moving out from the uh, production site area to the launch site here. Turning the corner, got a little bit closer up shot. But these are actually test holders. They're jigs that go between the top sticks. The top sticks? The chopsticks. They are headed for pad B, and we'll see more of them later in the video. See what they're for. Here's a test of the detonation suppression system. If we zoom in down to the bottom of the OLM there a little bit, you can see those vapors coming out. Uh, just trying to make an environment where things will not explode. But really quickly, we're going to jump over to Massey's, where we have the newly relabeled B18.1 test tank, previously, previously known as air quotes, test tank 17. We're going to jump back really quickly to the production site here. Trying to see which angle this is coming from. Is this is this Jack going out to get a shot? <laughs> I think Jack is like, I'm not sure if that's Jack. Yeah, it is. It's orange. <laughs> it's orange. So it's going to be Jack um, walking around there. And Caesar got the shot back from near the road or truck, it looks like. Over this way, you can see booster 14 on pad A. It's on the left-hand side of your shot there. Looking right into the sun in an artistic uh, sort of capture here. Nice outline of the grid fins. Oh, nice close-up of the grid fins, actually, here. Now, Booster 14 doing some very confusing things. Uh, might not be represented in this video, but as of right now, it was off the launch stand and rolling back. So, <laughs> we'll see what's going on with that. But here at this point in the day, a couple days back, it was successfully lifted up onto Pad A's launch mount. Successfully... <laughs> Hopefully there's no uh, considerations around what successfully means specifically there, but it was taken back off again. Going to see some work happening around. Here's the quick disconnect area of the booster. A couple folks just working around. Couldn't quite see the plate itself. Then we're going to roll over to the Deluge Tank Farm over near Pad B. There's that big driller, pile driller. It's not a pile driver. It's a big drilling rig. Drilling big holes in the ground. The freshly stacked launch pad B here. I'm going to say it. Launch pad A looks cooler with the circle and the pillars and sort of like it matches the booster. Launch pad B looks like something they built for SLS. Ugh. <laughs> I'll say it. It's like a miniature, like a miniature little uh, SLS launch pad. Of course, the entire SLS launch pad can move, and the Pad B launch pad <clears throat> getting welded down, it looked like, in any event. Oh, some tank farm testing. <laughs> Vapors coming out of the top of the tank farm area there. You got the pumps in the back. You got the big valves there in red, separated from the cryogenic piping down below. Actually, some of that piping looks pretty frosty. Was that insulation or frost? Y'all correct me if I'm wrong. Boxes with parts in them. Ah, more pumps from Ruhr Pumping. we got to get Adrian to say that for us. I'm not sure we're going to get uh, <laughs> German commentary on this one today. I think the Europeans are busy watching Eurovision or something. Is that happening now? I think that's happening. I don't know. I'm American. I don't know what the heck they're doing over there. <laughs> Look much like Starbase. Heck, Starbase. What the heck are they doing at Starbase? It's the theme of the whole video here. But uh, we see lots of this checkout testing here. I'm almost positive that's frost on the outside of those pipes there. Making uh, the tank farm getting spooled up with all these upgrades and new parts that they have installed. Preparing for flight. Of course, you can see the booster in the background there. And this crane moseying over in that direction. Quick handheld shot. Are they going to do something with the crane? Man, that artifact on all those cables is really wacky. This is definitely a thing with the wind direction and the, t the wind blowing those vapors across. Every now and then we have cameras right there next to Hopper. And when the wind is wrong and they're going towards sort of the launch or they're doing tank farm testing like that, you just can't see anything because the cameras are in the middle of the, vow the cloud of vapor. And there you could actually see the sheriff blocking the road as well so people aren't driving through that vapor cloud. Oh, a roundabout sign so that us Americans can figure out what you're supposed to do at this oddly shaped concrete structure in the middle of the road. Uh, it's a roundabout. You go around it. 
Americans. <laughs> We're going to have a sunset from Mr. Jack. Oh, the crane's in the background. No way. <laughs> oh, God, I wish I could stop the video. Rewind. You think SpaceX has cranes? That place over there has cranes. You think SpaceX does stuff fast? That LNG facility does stuff fast. That place is ridiculous. <laughs> in any event. Orbital Pad B. Here we go. Back to Orbital Pad B. Lots of work happening around here. Is this... Okay, so are we going to see sparks here? Is this actual welding operations? Yes! Yes, you see how there's no sparks falling from that and you just get the really, really bright lights? That's welding. That's not cutting or grinding. And it was happening right there, both down at the bottom and up near the top of the legs where the legs sort of touch the launch mount. So whichever side of the uh, bolting the launch mount down versus welding it on debate you were on, there you have it. They're welding it. Really quickly, we're going to see ship 36, that said, over the Mega Bay. And then here's ship 38 in Mega Bay 2. Same problem I always have. I want to talk about things for longer, and the clips sometimes just go by so fast that I can't completely explain everything. Oh, but it would be like a two-hour video, and we can't produce a two-hour video twice a week. <gasps> oh, we got a raptor. Man. That's like... That's like the skinny part of a raptor going over to the Mega Bay. Check this out. Jerry Pike, if you've seen the fantastic drone shots of boosters and drone ships coming in over at Cape Canaveral. Jerry lives over there, Cape Canaveral. Uh, but has come out to help us with some of our upgrades at Starbase here on the NSF team. Welcome to Jerry. And flying over here to get uh, some shots of the construction and the rocket ranch uh, outpost, that viewing area there. Here's a fantastic shot of the launch pads off in the distance and the production site on the left-hand side. Now the TFR ends here. So where Jerry's flying, there's a TFR that covers the launch pads, but here we're two plus miles away and there's a gap in the TFR, which is where that drone was flying. We were not flying inside of a TFR here. Now here's a foreshadowing. Questionable decision number one, uh, they have removed the alignment pins from the OLM. They've rolled the booster stand back from the launch site. They move the booster out. They get the booster off the stand. They put it on the launch pad, and they prepare. Hey, the booster's going to fly, right? That's the next thing it's going to do. We don't need the stand there anymore. We don't need the alignment pins there anymore. Let's just take all that back and store it at a safe distance, right? Yeah. Yeah. Stay tuned. <laughs> really, the best way to keep up with it is to watch Starbase live every day because when stuff rolls back and forth, uh, not only do you have the cool community to chat with while you're hanging out, but you get the freshest, most uh, most hottest... Well, I don't know, that sounds weird. You get the freshest information on what's happening at Starbase like 10 seconds shy of live. Now, this is a flap. Yeah, Ship forward flap, weight 3,100 pounds, tear weight 5,700 pounds. I think that was the tear weight, so the flap is going to be the difference between the tear weight of the jig and then the, the total weight, right? But this is what, if you've been following along on Starbase Live, you may be like, what in the heck is going on? If you saw Jack's tweets, Jack uh, reminding people that it's it's cold outside, all right? Uh, yeah, not at Starbase. I don't think that that's the explanation of what's going on with those huge, saggy bags at Starbase. Let's get some more time-lapse shots. <laughs> we'll get back to the deflated bags hanging from Pad B in just a second. All right, so we were talking about this, right? Oh, it didn't need the booster transport stand anymore. Send it back. We don't need it, right? Well, here it is rolling back towards the booster. Why do you roll the transport stand back towards the booster? Well, maybe you need to get the booster back off the pad. Maybe you need to transport the booster all the way back to the uh, production site again. But here, <laughs> I don't know if we went with this in the thumb or not. <laughs> what you see on the Pad B chopsticks are huge. They're not mass simulators. It's actual mass. They're not simulating mass. They're load simulators. I guess it's technically a load as well. Uh, they are massive bags that they fill with water. Water, of course, easy to pump around, pretty dense, as it turns out. So you can use it for uh, easily movable mass, 
right? It's not hard to move a little bit of water around at a little bit of time or at a time, and then you put enough water in one place and you got a lot of mass. And what they've done is they've filled those massive bags with uh, tons and tons, hundreds of tons of water. And they are testing out the Pad B chopsticks well beyond what it would ever carry picking up an empty ship or booster by picking up hundreds of tons of water in the odd-looking bags. Chat moderation in Starbase Live has been a hoot lately, let me tell you. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> looking over at some uh, Pad B gantry work is again. There's the manifold with the ca the plastic over the end of it that'll put water into the top, the water cool steel plate on the top of the thing. Got a little bit of doozer action here. Going up and down the scaffolding. Don't show up and eat the scaffolding. Doozers don't like that. Doozers? Dozers? Which ones are they? I don't know. But here at the end of the video, if you thought that we were title of the last video, or I guess statement of the last video, barreling towards flight, Booster came off the launch mount. It was all stacked, all ready, looking good. Then it got pulled off of the launch mount. Some fantastic shots. Caesar out here, middle of the night, catching all of those raptor booties. <laughs> raptor covers, raptor on the bottom. Does that actually have the covers on it right now? It's wigging me into thinking that it doesn't, but maybe it's just the logos. Oh, somebody help me out. The salient fact here is that the booster being removed from the launch pad put onto a transport stand when we thought that the next thing was for the ship to roll out and be stacked on top of the booster and then go for launch in like four days. That is no longer a realistic goal anymore. We've seen no tams and other notices popping up for after Memorial Day, 26th, 27th, and beyond at this point. Some questions whether or not they could actually launch on the holiday, Memorial Day, Technically not supposed to, but honestly, SpaceX gets a lot of leeway. Uh, there would certainly be a huge viewing crowd there if they went for a Monday the 26th launch. But I wouldn't be surprised if we saw this launch date move back later in the week or beyond, potentially all the way into June. I mean, we went from thinking, hey, it just needs one good static fire, then the ship's going to roll out and get a stack and we're going to go for it to uh, the ship Raptors mysteriously moving around between the mega bays where the ships are, and the booster rolling back from the launch mount. We've seen them do maintenance and preparations. Maybe something went a little bit wrong, and we have a tall crane, and we pull the, the hot staging ring off the top, and we do some work up there around the grid fins or something. We've seen that happen before. Do they not have a crane currently out there that can do that? Is it just for the hot staging ring? Is there something else wrong with the booster? Or is the ship delay just long enough that they want to store the booster inside, out of the weather, instead of having it out there on the launch mount for some number of weeks while corrections are done to the ship? There's one way to find out. Keep hanging out with here uh, with us here twice a week, Starbase updates, or Starbase updates, Starbase summaries, once a week, Starbase updates, and every day, Starbase Live. My name's John. Appreciate y'all watching, and we will catch you nerds later.